to welcome fellow Miami princess Ashley Venom to the show. Yay, everybody clap for Ashley Venom. I uh, met her as she was working with Three Points Music Art and Technology Festival here in South Florida. Definitely one of my favorite music festivals, and not just because I know the people who put it on. It is a banger. Um, she uh, is a Haitian American DJ, event producer, and activist, as well as a lovely and bubbly human. She works with the Disc Woman Collective out of New York City. They're a really fabulous group of electronic music madams. Totally girl power, and not just like <laughs> girl power, but like ugh, girl power, badass techno DJs and producers. Anyway, Ashley slings dark industrial techno by night and by day. She's been hitting the streets, protesting, organizing, and raising money for the reformation and demilitarization of our national police force. If y'all are for the demilitarization of our police force, uh, I don't know what to ask for in the chat. Anything. <laughs> Clapping hands. If you're on your phone, it's like, Fuck 12 and all that shit. <laughs> yes, she is a queen. Okay, so I think she should be ready for my call. If you guys are ready for me to call Ashley, put some phone emojis in the chat. Phone emojis if you're on your phone. Oh, and I should also point out, I don't know if you guys have noticed below me, I've got my June subscription goal. Um, I do put this show on all by myself and I do it with all my own time, energy. And if you want to support me in that effort, a subscription goes a long way, but all tips this month are being donated to uh, national bailout funds, rebuilding efforts around the country, and NAACP and ACLU lawyer defense funds. So if we can all put even a few dollars into the tips, the donations, you can either hit me up on Venmo at Kat Says Kill, or if you swipe right, left, figure it out somehow on your Twitch app, there is a way for you to like uh, tip me right through twitch.com uh, in my PayPal. And all of that money, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it will go to those very worthy causes. So <clears throat> let's call Ashley. <laughs> let's see how she's doing. Do, 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 do. Hello, it worked. It worked out. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I was looking forward to this call all day, so I'm excited. Me too. It looks so nice with the new overlay. I know I sent you a picture, and you kind of know what we look like, but I'm so excited that it's here. Thank you. <laughs> and your hat looks so adorable. Thank you. And and your uh, your videos that you took for my intro came out wonderfully. I don't know if you got to see the final product yet. I did. Yeah, it looks so cute. I love it. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I was just talking you up a little bit. Uh, thank you, Lasso Management, for following, I think. Anyway, um, <laughs> are you at home in Miami? Where are you? Where have you been quarantined? Give us the, the breakdown of your day. Yeah, so I live in Little Havana, uh, which is like a little south of uh, downtown. Um, and yeah, I've been basically home for like three months since March 13th. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I've honestly been just staying home, but I have broken quarantine just a couple times, but like for protests, which yeah. to me was like worth it. I'm like, if I'm going to get Corona, it's going to be because I'm literally like screaming George Floyd's name. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've mostly been staying home. What about you? Well, pretty much same. Uh, I have to admit with a heavy heart that I haven't made it to any protests. Uh, I was just saying I'm going to go see my dad in a couple weeks, and I'm a little worried about potentially exposing myself in that way, um, but I'm very much 110% proud of every person I know who's been out to those protests, and I can't wait to go out myself when I'm in the Bay Area, because this issue isn't going to end anytime soon. This is something that we have to keep pushing on. Um, but I would love to hear about your experience at the protests. I'm sure it was wild to go from not leaving your house for three months to suddenly being in a crowd of thousands <laughs> in downtown Miami. Yeah, I mean, to touch on what you said, honestly, like, I totally feel that in terms of exposing yourself. Like, that's, I totally get that. But I also think that it's important for folks to know that you don't always have to be like, protesting to get involved and there's so many other ways that like 
we can support movements. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like breaking quarantine and going to the protests, honestly, I gotta say, like, I've been so diligent of not leaving my house because, like, I I don't have health insurance. My mom yeah. is older than me. She's sixty five, so like, not trying to get her sick. And also, my roommate has asthma, so like, it's just <laughs> yeah, I have girl. to stay home, even to go to get groceries. Like, there was a certain point I was like anti, and I still am anti Amazon. But yeah. like, it came to the point where I was like, you know what? I have to get my groceries on Amazon fresh because like I'm not gonna risk my health. Um, but you know, obviously police brutality is like nothing new this is you know this has been going on for at least since the 1800s i would say since police began since peace police were invented right um, yeah because they weren't they didn't exist forever and ever and ever don't don't exactly. think it's like yeah. <laughs> um but i think there was a certain point like i was having a conversation with someone the other day and they said this to me and it just hit home they were like i finally realized that i was in the depths of like the like whole of 2020 and i feel like there was a moment where like after three and a half months of staying home being unemployed not making money and like just feeling like anxious from being home and you're seeing all this shit happen on the news and this specific uh, sorry about that. Okay. this specific murder was different than the others i think because it was nine minutes long and you like it's just it it traumatized me in a different way and i think a lot of people who maybe felt something but like didn't feel enough to say something or whatever just were feeling a mix of turmoil from everything that's been happening from like 120 or 100,000 people who died from corona you know it's like all these things that are piling up and it's like june 2020 and no one has a job the stimulus check has run out so yeah, I was feeling that, and I was like, it came to the point where I think it was like two or three days after the incident with George Floyd that I was like, why isn't anyone like I mean. <laughs> protesting? Like, why is my enemy so quiet? You know, we have all these organizations, but no one's like actually doing like, or not that they're not doing anything, but I haven't seen any protests being publicized. So I had seen one, like the first one that I saw, I was like so just driven to like say something that i tweeted it and i posted about it and it kind of went viral and like miami new times wrote about it and then like after that whole thing happened i come to find out these folks were like working hand in hand with the cops and invited the cops and were like like let the cops speak and like i get it but that's not what i stand for I'm yeah. more about like abolishing the cops and confronting the system, not like negotiating and like you know propaganda. <laughs> You're not trying so, to negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I was like, "Hey, y'all, I'm sorry. I need to be transparent. I don't feel comfortable telling people to go to this protest, but there's going to be others. So um, a few other people. There was one on a Saturday. There was one on Sunday." And for the most part, I will say that, like, I felt so much anxiety, like, leading up to it. Um, My mom knows the work that I do in the community and stuff, but she doesn't, like, I try not to tell her as much. And I don't know why, but I was just like, hey, by the way, I'm going to be protesting. And she was just like, listen, if you love me, you won't go. And I'm like, actually, I'm going because I love you, because I'm fighting for you and and your ancestors. So, um, I was just feeling so much anxiety and I just remember like not even feeling completely normal or there, but even like seeing friends, like we would see each other and we wouldn't even like know how to interact because we hadn't seen each other in three months and like Right, all of a sudden here you are. Like (laughs) (laughs) we're all dressed kind of weird because there's like all these like suggestions on what to wear, what not to wear. It's just like just a lot of energy and anger and sadness but it was really great to see people coming together and it was thousands of people honestly and people that i would never think would even care so i it just showed me honestly that people do care and they're just sometimes we need guidance and if you like educate people on what's happening inform them on how they can 
help or make a difference, I feel like people genuinely will show up. So that was really good. The first night, it's crazy because literally the first night of protests, things got violent. And it was because of the police, because of their presence, because they were tear gassing. I remember even early in the day, like when we had just gotten on I-95, literally just gotten on, they already had tear gassed us. Oh and I'm God. like, okay, you know what? I'm going to stay back a little bit. I'm going to still be here, but I'm just going to stay back because, you know, I'm, I support the radical stuff. I support the riots and all that. I just, I can't like, I got to support from afar, you know? Yeah, so, that's the hard the question. Time. I feel like everyone who wants to be involved in what's happening right now because they recognize that it's so important and this is a real opportunity for us to have real change happen in this country at a legislative le level. Like, There's so much momentum, but there are so many different ways to have that conversation. Like, oh, am I ready to potentially put myself at risk for Corona or the people I'm with or like... You know, Unique was in the chat too saying her mom didn't understand that she wanted to go out and protest right now. And she said, you know, they'll understand one day. Um, and even like, how do I, once I'm there, how, how do I go about this? Like as safely as I can. Well, like I thought to myself, I really want to go out. And even if I'm not walking, hand out water to people or snacks or like be there in a way that's supportive of the people who are really out there like confronting police or whoever it may be. Um, but I am really glad to hear that as far as I know from reports around the country, a lot of that initial violence has settled and maybe we're reaching a point of, well, we all know these protests are going to happen and hopefully they, the cops know they're going to be seen and pulling some stupid shit. Exactly. But I, don't I know. honestly feel like, I think it was with you maybe that we might have been talking about this yesterday but that i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people are filming them and literally the same day it goes viral so i feel like now a lot of people are going to be held accountable maybe not in the way that we want them to but like for example there was a cop in uh, fort lauderdale who there was a woman on her knees like just like on her knees looking up in the middle of a protest and he comes up to her and throws her on the ground and his boss who's a black woman mind you all of them are in right here this yeah. one black woman is like chilling because she knows there's no reason to be and she's screaming at him in front of all of them i don't know what she's saying but you can tell she's like don't Livid. ever do that again yeah so and he got suspended so and i mean i'm sure it was probably like three days and which is not going to do anything but that alone that I've never seen that done. Like I've never seen a cop tell another cop you shouldn't do that. So that in itself is like seeing progress. You totally. Know? And I think um, that story also is a good example of why you need diversity in any role, in any job, in any industry. Because when you've got a black woman on the force seeing someone do some fucked up shit, <laughs> they're going to be like, uh, excuse me, no, <laughs> that's not allowed. Exactly. Slash at media organizations like the type I work at, when you have women or people of color or queer people on the staff, you're going to have people thinking about those groups. You're not going to have a bunch of white dudes like, oh, yeah, let's put a bunch of white dudes on the front page. You're like, hey, exactly. you can't do that every day. Um, so everyone push yourselves and I don't know <laughs> to, to your part. Um, but you're not just a protest princess badass. Like, you yourself are also breaking barriers as a DJ and producer and event producer in the local Miami scene. Uh, what were you up to before quarantine hit? What has been going on? Were you still doing the um, Masisi events? Talk to us about yeah. that. Oh, and yeah, Jubilee says hi. She says she loves you. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's so awesome, honestly. Um, yeah, so I, I've been a music, or sorry, I've been an event producer in Miami for seven years now. Um, so I've honestly always done events. And like, it's just, I don't know, I feel like people, when they think of events, a lot of times they think of me. So like, people will contact me sometimes for advice and stuff. That's a great um, place to be. Congrats. <laughs> thank you. Um, and so I've been working, so Three Points, I worked for Three Points for four and a half years. Um, and I recently got laid off, but I'm still like, 
you know, part of the team yeah. in some way. That that's my family. Um, Feel that. But right now, I'm like mostly focusing on DJing and Masisi, which is a queer monthly party. Um, it's a queer Black diasporic party. So we like to focus on like the elements of Caribbeanness and que- like Black queerness, Ooh. which you don't really see too often. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I've been honestly like. Also, I've been uh, managing one of my friends. He's an illustrator. So I've been, like, helping him manage his situation and, like, you know, with his gigs and stuff. So I just think I'm in a place right now where (laughs) I'm being, you know what I mean? Like, the quarantine was the first time ever in my life that I could just stop and eat and do things because I wanted to or because I, you know, I would so just because I wanted to and it made me feel good. So I'm just in that place where I'm being creative because it feels good. I'm reading more and not really like trying to focus on like the movements, but more so like what makes me happy. So yeah, yeah, I love all of that. I think that everyone up until quarantine was kind of experiencing this collective. Uh, what what's when you're just burnt out? It was like everyone that you talked to was like, "I'm burnt out. I'm working too hard. I'm not making enough money." And then all of a sudden. The world just kind of took a pause and we've all had time to reevaluate and that in itself is scary because you know i too have lost jobs in this situation and i'm definitely not making the money i was making before it all happens but we can at least look inward and find the answer to the next move for me it was doing something like this show and for you what projects have you been working on so i'm Diving more into producing music, um, what I've realized, you know, talking about burnout, honestly, I feel burnt out from the whole protesting thing. Um, Not just protesting, but, like, movement in general. Like, I've been working in movement and bailing folks out for over a year now. So that in itself, like, takes a toll on you. Um, But I'm trying to find ways of merging that like activism and social work with music and DJing. Yeah. Um, and I know that, that like there's ways that folks do it. There's obviously like, you know, you can donate your time for an event that's like intent, like with the intention of a cause, but I want to like do it deeper in the sense of like creating revolutionary music and like teaching folks, but also like saying some radical shit. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's, yeah, I'm like learning Ableton right now. Um, my agent Christine sent me this book um, that talks about like sound and how it affects our psychology and like I guess ways that we can like make changes with music I don't know like if you if you play music like a certain type of music that puts folks in the mindset of being more perceptive and you're able to like educate them in a way it's almost like I don't know like magic I don't know yeah totally well, because music it. itself induces this, like, trance-like feeling in your body. It's kind of taking you to a higher place. And then you mix into that music and that rhythm a message of sorts. And they're open to it. They're hearing it. They're experiencing it. Uh, John Marco in the chat says, if you ever want Ableton tips, he's got you. That's my dude. He definitely knows what he's doing. Um, also, Moki Baby says you look beautiful. I just want to make sure you get that message. <laughs> Me too. Thank you so much. Uh, Zach would like to know what that book is. I'd like to know too. What's that book? Actually, let me. I can't open it up right now. It is called, it is called Sonic Warfare by Sweet Goodman. Wow. And so it's crazy because, like, literally the first, the first page talks about how, like, in certain armies they'll use. Um, sonic warfare yeah. um, like in the palestine israel situation that there's like they there's like sonic bombs and i don't know how to explain it but it's it basically causes like nosebleeds and like windows to break and like all this yeah. shit and like, and like one of the things they said is like yeah you know people were saying they prefer this as opposed to real bombs and i'm like the fact that you know sound is even being utilized in warfare is like so powerful so i think if we can like reappropriate that and use it for the opposite for revolution for change for positive change i feel like 
I don't know, I could contribute. That could be my contribution without having to always be putting my body on the line and be, you know, protesting with a sign on the streets, you know. Totally. Because it takes a lot. It takes a lot to be doing that. And God bless everyone who's out there doing it at any point in time. Um, I feel like that's not necessarily a new concept for you, though, because even going back to the Masisi parties and what you were saying about trying to create a safe space while creating a platform for this queer, black, diasporic perspective, I mean, that in itself becomes a political act in a way, you know? Even though it's like we're having a party, again, you're mixing music and dance and community with this greater message. Uh, is that something that you were conscious of at the time, or is it something you now look at through a different perspective? Yeah, definitely. So um, I started the party with some friends who were all a part of Femme Power, um, and everything we do, honestly, is very intentional and very political, um, you know, from the shirts that we wear, like what our shirts say, or like even certain colors I will wear, like even the themes behind certain parties, it's all very political. Um, and like one of the things that we hold deeply is that like, I don't remember if it was Toni Morrison or Audre Lorde or one of those like famous black like revolutionary women, but one of them said, um, you know, the revolution, the role of the artist is to make the revolution irresistible. Oh, and so we're like, that's great. people are not gonna wanna like hear change if you're like this is why you know like with the list if you have to like <laughs> sexy in a way yeah. so like that's what we were doing you know like in caribbean culture um being queer being gay being trans is looked down upon by a lot of um conservative folks so our like part in this is really just to like open folks minds up and also have those communities of people that don't know each other exist you know, the queer black folks in Miami who maybe aren't out or like aren't super flashy with it, but they want community, that's kind of that space for them to come together. That's so awesome. How long have you been doing those parties up until this moment? <laughs> so it's been a year since we've been doing it. Congrats, that's yeah. huge. Thank you. <laughs> it's tough to do anything for a year, girl. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, it's it's been evolving, and even my friend Terrell, um, who I've been managing, it's, he's the one who does the illustrations for oh, that cool. party. So it's like, we're, we are all, like, this, like, organism that works together and does different things, but it's always with the intention of making some sort of change or sharing a message, you know? Intention is such a beautiful key to anything. If you've got an intention at heart, and you just start and you just get to work, something beautiful will blossom for sure, I believe. Yeah, I agree. I feel like intention is almost like magic, you know? Like during my time of quarantine, I've been getting into herbalism and stuff. Oh yeah, I saw you with that rosemary this morning. Where's yeah, your rosemary? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. I think putting an intention behind something and having, you know, whether it's an herb or a candle or you write it down, or it's even you just take five minutes to meditate on it. That in itself is like so much power, especially when we're always like on the go, like not really focusing on ourselves, taking a moment just to say, this is what I want, or this is what I feel can go so far. So. Yeah. And I want to circle back a little bit as well, because you did mention Christine. And is that Christine with this woman? Yes. Yeah, I'd love to hear, you know, if anyone out there doesn't know, Disc Woman is this incredible female-driven dance electronic dance music collective, and I'd love to hear how you actually met up with them, how you connected, and why they're a crew that you like working with. Yeah, so I actually met Christine through her wife, Becca. Um, Becca is the founder of Chromat, which is this brand that um, is very inclusive of people of different sizes, different ethnicities, cool. different abilities. You know, they've worked with folks who, you know, have prosthetics and stuff mm. like that, but like very, very cool. Can you spell um, that too? So I know how to find it later. Yeah. C-H-R-O-M-A-T. Okay, cool. Everyone got that at home? All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so Becca actually came down to my 
um, and was had reached out to Fem Power to work with us and have us model the looks, her looks. And Christine obviously also came, and Christine has been working with Becca. Not only are they married, but Christine also produces Becca's like fashion shows and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So she's they're very like intertwined. Um, and yeah, I mean that's how I met Christine. I had reached out to Christine personally and told her that I wanted to work with her, um, and that was something that took a lot of courage. Yeah, I'm not that person. That makes the first move. You just gotta but, ask. Um, you just got to ask. <laughs> exactly. And the reason why is because I i mean, the fact that their intention is just to uplift and empower women, non-binary, trans artists, um, and the fact that, like, they don't care if you have followers or not. It's really about the music and your talent. So that, to me, spoke volumes. Yeah. And I just respected Christine as a person and, like, their values in general. You know, I know that, like, they get a lot of heat on the internet because they're very real and very honest. And I was like, okay, I fuck with that. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love to see people who will call, you know, who will like be very direct about it, who will call things out and who will like, for, like fight for their artists, you know? So like in a way I feel I'm spiritual in a way that I think things work out the way they should. So meeting Christine, I was just like, Hey, I trust you. I love your vision. I, respect all of your the people you work with what do you think and she was open so that's kind of how that happens that's so good and speaking yes. about your musical talent and what you've been up to I know you're really just getting started in the production game but I was listening to the mix you did for lot radio back in February which is up on her soundcloud and I just want to tell you thank you so much for mixing piccolo stick and roll into your oh my that was a Nick Leone edit, by the way. Oh, Just fucking shout out, out Nick Leone. Yes, yes, yes. Dude, because I, like, get drunk at parties and play that song for people that aren't from Miami, and they're just like, what even is this? And I'm like, the oh best song God. ever. Miami has such, like, a a flavor. I don't know. that Like, once you hear it, you feel it. It's, all, it's very electro in a way. Yeah. Uh, well, because our whole history with Miami bass, you know, like, and uh, drum and bass and breakbeat, like, we've got a history of fucking with those dirty, Sorry. dirty synthy beats. <laughs> 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 what, what, were you into that as a kid? Like, how did you get introduced to this world as a young Haitian American? Uh... <laughs> so, honestly, growing up, I would say I mostly, like, my sister was a big influence on my music taste and I was mostly listening to like hip hop and stuff. Like I remember listening to like Ice Cube and Destiny's Child growing up. Um, and, like John Paul and stuff. Um, Ashanti. All the classics. All the classics. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then I guess like middle school I would say I kind of like I went through a scene phase. <laughs> Who did it? I got into like <laughs> metal Rock, basically like all the genres of rock I got into um and then high school I think was when I was getting into like the chill wave like mm. touring rock kind of vibe um but like towards the end of high school I would say I started my journey on with electronic music but I wouldn't say it was necessarily great <laughs> like or not let me not say that I would yeah say, well wasn't it great <laughs> I was more into like dubstep and like oh no, it was like the beginning of that like phase. Don't don't um, ever be ashamed of your dubstep roots, girl. Come on, we all like to bang out. Anyone who just says they don't like to bang out is lying. <laughs> I mean, I, at the time it was new and it was fucking cool, you know, like Mala and Manga and Koki. And yeah, like come on, and and it's the roots of it, the old like UK exactly. like dubstep, you know. Exactly. <laughs> um, honestly, I can say though, like truly, truly, the reason why I have the music taste I do now I can I feel like because of three points um just because the first year that I started working for three points in 2016 I remember looking at the flyer and not knowing like 90 percent of the names um even they, Nicholas they Jar deep. I had heard yeah. of Nicholas Jar but I was like I didn't know who he was so that like getting to know each of the artists and like each year like you know, having to know who each person is even before the lineup comes out, I feel like that really helped me not only to learn how to find music, but also just like open up my 
perspective. Um, so yeah, I think 2016 was like a pivotal point for me when I was like, okay, I don't know any of these artists, but they all sound really good. So let me just keep like going deeper and deeper. And then I realized I really fucking love techno. <laughs> just because like I, for me, like hip hop, but what I love about hip hop is like not only the words, but like the bass and that like feeling. Mm-hmm. And I feel like techno and a lot of electronic music has that same feeling definitely that's kind of what i look for now when i'm trying to find music is that feeling not really like a sound but just like that feeling oh yeah well i can't wait to see how you synthesize all those years and phases of influence to create something that's wholly and entirely you i mean that's what's really exciting about hearing that you're going to produce because you've clearly got taste and you've blown people away with your taste, whether it's curating an event or putting a DJ set together. But, like, what's going to happen when you're just letting your brain out? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm so excited. Honestly, I want to fuse some of the Haitian into there. Yeah. So, you, I don't know. There might be some Creole. We'll see. We'll see. Fuck I yeah. <laughs> you, I, I, you know, no pressure. But, like, I want to hear that, too. Like, I feel like you, you've got those roots to represent for. And just infusing the culture that you grew up with into the music that you put out is a going to make you stand out from everyone else. Cause not everyone else is you and B like bring some exciting new flavor to the scene. You know, yes. we don't have enough Haitian DJs. Shout out Michael yes. Brunn, but like, <laughs> It's so cool. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, is there's anything else that you want to let people know about, whether there are more, uh, protest events coming up in Miami or more ways people can get involved, even if it's not putting their bodies out there, slash anything you're doing creatively that you want to let people know about, please share. Yeah, so um, I would say there is another protest happening um, tomorrow, Mm. June 12th. Um, I'm not uh, the one that's organizing it, but I do know the person who is. So if you want more info, I think the page is a cab SFL, A C A B S F L on um, Instagram. Oh cool. And um, if you want to get involved and you are not trying to be holding up a sign, I would say there's definitely other ways. Um, you can donate to different funds, whether it's bailout funds, there's one in every city, probably multiple in every city. Um, you can um, make mixtures for folks who are going to be on the front lines like people who are actually protesting you can create a mixture of like baking soda and water so if they get tear gas they can just pour it in their eyes that's Um, proper baking soda yeah yeah it's three i think it's three tablespoons of baking soda and to eight ounces of water and you just mix it and um, if anyone gets tear gas you just pour it in their eyes and don't rub it in just like let it do its thing um there are also, you know, if you're in the medical field, there are also medics and stuff that go to yeah. the scenes to help folks who are injured. Um, if you're a lawyer, maybe, and you want to help people. I don't know. There's just, like, different ways. I feel like the best thing for everyone to do is be like, okay, what am I good at? Or what can I, what do I have to offer? Whether it's resources or a skill, and try to, like, cater it to that thing. Yeah. Um, And then for me, I am honestly going to be learning how to produce the next couple of months. And my hope or my goal is to like, by January 2021, to have like some music out. So just be patient with me. Of course. (laughs) Um, And like, know that I'm growing and I'm learning every day. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to sharing with everyone in the next few months. Fuck yeah, me too. I'm excited to hear it. And we can get together again when you've got jams to share. Talk about the process. See what it was like for you. Yes. So tell everyone where they can follow you. I didn't get the social tags ready in time for today. So where's the best way for people to stay in touch with you? So I'm Ashley Venom on Instagram and Twitter. And on SoundCloud, I'm White Cactus. Don't ask, but White Cactus. <laughs> well, yeah, sounds like a good story. <laughs> you can also probably just search Ashley Venom on SoundCloud and find me as well. It'll come up. It'll come up. <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much for bringing your wonderful energy and your awesome hat. <laughs> thank you for having me. I hope you have a beautiful day. Yes. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. 
Yeah. No, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Yay. Ashley Benham. Everybody claps in the chat. <laughs> She's so wonderful, right? I'm so excited to see what she does musically. Uh, you really should check out her DJ sets. She's got quite a few up on her SoundCloud, White Cactus, as she said. Or you can just search Ashley Venom. And yeah, I can't wait till we're out of quarantine so I can go to a CC party. I'm trying to sweat it out. <laughs> actually, like a couple days ago, last week, Friday, I actually did meet up with some friends, don't tell anyone, and drank for the first time in months. And um, yeah, I don't miss hangovers. <laughs> it was pretty fucking awful. But I would like to dance. I'd like to have a dance party. You don't even need alcohol if you're having a dance party. And uh, I want to shout out everyone here. Lasso Management, Moki Baby, I love you. Young Baby Doll, I'm glad you had fun. <laughs> Mela Calamari. I'm so bad at reading these names out. <laughs> but I'm glad everyone's here and it's nice to see you. And as a reminder, if you do want to donate, uh, I will be giving all tips that I make for this month and into July a little bit since I started late to... Uh, rebuilding efforts, uh, national bailout funds, and the law defense funds of the NAACP and ACLU. So if you hit me up on Venmo at Cat Says Kill, or you hit my tip donation box at the bottom of the Twitch screen, 100% of that money will go to the cause. And if you do feel like uh, supporting me, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel, and uh, I get at least half of that money, which takes the other half.